I made this game using only AI tools. From the models and environment, to the sounds, animations and even the code. The goal was to see what AI tools can do right now and where they still need some work. In this video, I will take you step by step through the process of making a fully AI generated game. And let me tell you, I was personally blown away with what is already possible at few occasions. If like me, you are quite skeptical about how AI fits into game development, stick around to the end of this video. I will also share my thoughts on what is it good at, what it struggles with and how it's slowly changing the way we work on games. I also have a small surprise for you coming from the creators of Ludus AI at the end of this video. If you're new here, welcome! My name is Rafał Bremski and I've been making games professionally for about 9 years. AI tools are quickly becoming a big part of game development and like with any other tool really, it's about finding ways to make them work for you without losing the creative spark that makes games special. The last thing we want to see is gaming markets being completely saturated with soulless AI generated games being played mainly by other AI bots. But we also cannot ignore the potential AI tools introduced. And this video is aiming at showing some of that potential that has to be used to help you create your vision instead of replacing your ideas with generic crap. In my last video on this topic, I created a prototype for a third-person video game with melee combat, for which I heavily used AI-generated assets. But that prototype wasn't made entirely with AI. Some of the assets for the level, as well as animations, were created using other techniques. I also wrote the logic for the game myself, because for someone already familiar with Unreal Engine, it was simply faster to do it alone without getting help from tools like ChatGPT. For this project, I wanted to go further. My goal is to rely entirely on AI tools, even for areas where I already have some experience to see what could be achieved if I approached the engine as someone completely new. Huh? I will also be keeping the idea for the game mechanics as something that comes from me, as I really believe creativity itself shouldn't be outsourced to AI. The idea for this project is quite simple. I want to create a top-down bullet hell game where the main character isn't humanoid. This time I wanted to test how AI handles more abstract concepts. To start things off, I needed a main character. And this is where I'm really glad we're making an AI-generated game. Because the only thing I'm good at modeling is the donut from Andrew Price tutorial. And even that looks like I would be sent straight to the hospital if I tried to eat it. So I turned to Meshi AI, a tool that converts text or images into 3D models. And watching how fast this tool is learning is the main reason I started saying please and thank you in my chat GPT prompts. Just in case we humans fail to destroy the planet before AI takes over. When that happens, I hope the robots will remember that I was the polite one. Thank you. Having just rewatched Ghost in the Shell, I decided I wanted the main character to be a cute little spider robot. Since I've been using Meshi for a while now, I know it works best with more stylized models. So I told. <coughs> sorry, I mean. I politely asked Meshi for a spider tank. The first few results will haunt me in my nightmares forever. One of them looked like it's wearing the face of its last victim, and for a moment I almost pivoted to making a horror game instead. But after a few tries, Meshi nailed it. A simple, cartoony robot with an empty screen for a face. Perfect for displaying a cute smiley face. Thank you, Meshi. The next challenge was movement animations. As I learned in my last project, AI isn't quite there yet when it comes to understanding how things are supposed to move. 
And on one hand, that's good news for humanity, having the robot apocalypse in mind. But on the other hand, it's not great when you are trying to make a game. To tackle this, I brought in the big gun, Ludus AI, an assistant designed specifically for Unreal Engine 5. Unlike most AI tools, Ludus works directly inside the engine as a plugin. Before jumping into the Spiderbot's animations, I took it for a little test drive. I created an empty scene and placed a simple blue cube that comes with the third-person Unreal Engine project. As I mentioned earlier, there were moments during this project where AI completely surprised me, and this was definitely one of them. Ludus was actually able to take a look at my scene and describe what it saw. After taping my webcam, just in case, I mean, it doesn't need to look at me, thank you, I asked Ludus to create a sci-fi chair in a style and color that matched that cube. To my surprise, it did exactly that, without asking any unnecessary questions about salary or overtime. But let's be honest, a simple chair is something I could probably manage myself. Sure, it might take me a few hours instead of a few seconds, and there would probably be some crying involved, but I could get there eventually. Probably. The real challenge came when I wanted Ludus to handle something more complex. Creating assets for an entire level that matched my Spiderbot style. To test this, I placed the spider bot in the scene and asked Ludus to generate environment elements in a similar style. And once again, Ludus delivered. The assets it created made it clear that I will be able to build out a level for my gameplay idea, a factory where my spider bot will fight evil turrets. Knowing what Ludus can do in terms of 3D modeling, it was time to see if it could help me bring my spider bot to life. Although it cannot generate animations just yet, I decided to take a more logic-driven approach, and I asked it to create a system for animating the spider's limbs through code. The way Ludus works here is a bit different from how it generates models. It cannot create blueprint logic entirely on its own, at least not yet. But what it can do is provide a clear step-by-step -step solution to your problem, showing you exactly what to do in your blueprint to achieve the result. On top of that, it is able to analyze the blueprint you're working on and tell you where you've made mistakes or how to improve it to finalize the logic. As I mentioned, for this project, I decided to put my own Unreal Engine knowledge aside and fully rely on Ludus's instructions. This, of course, made me feel like I was the manual labor robot in this scenario, but that's a discussion for another day. Following Ludus's guidance, I ended up with a system that dynamically adjusted each limb's rotation and position based on player input, all built directly in the animation blueprint. This logic-driven approach allowed me to bring my spider bot to life without using traditional animations at all. It took a bit back and forth with tweaking it to mimic how spiders move in real life with that added robotic feel to it. But in the end I think it looks good enough. With the help of Ludus code, I was even able to add some additional idle animation, with the head of my spider jumping up and down. With my spider bot now walking and bopping its head like a champ, it was time to arm it with some firepower. The model generated by Meshi didn't come with any weapon, so I turned to Ludus for help. I asked it to generate a little spider with a gun to sit on top of my main character's head. Kind of like it's mini-me. Of course, once I saw it, I couldn't stop there. I had to take it a step further and generate another mini spider to live on top of that one. And this one's only job and life purpose is to be a cowboy hat. Because obviously, every spider bot needs a cowboy hat at some point in its life. I'll admit, I was very tempted to stack yet another spider bot on top of the cowboy hat one, but eventually I moved on to creating the shooting mechanics. To make my spider bot aim properly, 
I asked Ludus to provide a solution for rotating the head based on the mouse position. Ludus, as usual, came through with a step-by-step -step blueprint for the logic. For the actual projectiles, I kept it simple. A cube stylized to look like a laser beam, complete with a glowing material and a spotlight for that extra flare. This was also made using Ludus's instructions and soon enough my spider bot was walking, aiming and firing lasers with all the confidence of a tiny robotic gunslinger cowboy. There were a few moments where Ludus got a bit confused. I would ask for help with some code logic and instead it decided I needed a 3D model. Like, oh, you, you wanted a blueprint logic? Here's a 3D model of a chair. For the enemies, I decided to use factory turrets. Humanoid enemies would have required a lot of animation work. Walking, attacking and reacting. And while Ludus is great for many things, creating those animations would have been a slow and complex process for this project. Turrets, on the other hand, are perfect for this kind of a game. All of this, the logic, the assets, was created using Ludus. What's interesting is that Ludus also guided me through creating the Niagara VFXs for the turret distraction. The level itself is a gloomy cyberpunk style factory. Ludus not only helped creating walls, floors and enemy characters, but also suggested lighting tweaks and post-process effects to enhance the atmosphere. The first room introduces the core mechanics of the game, and with Ludus, I build the logic to control how it all plays out. When the player enters, turrets spawn one at a time, rising dramatically from hidden floor panels. Each defeated turret drops glowing gears, which act as points for the player to collect. Once picked up, these points float around the player, and the player needs to deliver them to a factory monitor in the center of the room. The monitor displays the total number of points required to unlock the door to the next area. The game increases the intensity by spawning multiple turrets at once, forcing the player to stay on the move and think strategically. The next room, which is the final room for the game, is a completely separate space that serves as the boss arena and builds on the mechanics from the first room, while introducing new twists. At its center is a massive turret that fires projectiles, but instead of targeting the player directly, these projectiles spawn smaller turrets wherever they land. This creates a shift in gameplay. Instead of just dodging and shooting, the player now has to manage the growing number of smaller turrets while trying to defeat the main boss enemy. Ludus was instrumental in creating the logic for both rooms. To add more atmosphere to the game, I used 11 Labs AI to generate sound effects. For the music, I turned to Suno AI, which specializes in generating tracks based on style prompts. Now that the game is fully playable, I'm wondering, would you like to try it yourself? If there is enough interest in the comments, I might release this game for free on itch.io. If I do decide to release it, I will probably announce it on my Twitter, that's now called X so be sure to follow me there. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. So what did I learn from this? AI tools are amazing for prototyping and helping with areas outside your expertise. You need a quick 3D model or a solution for the game logic? AI can probably save you hours, but for a finished product, it still lacks the quality and creative touch of a skilled artist or a developer. But one surprising benefit of AI tools like Ludus is how they can teach you. By guiding you step by step, they help you understand how to solve problems and build systems yourself. It's like having a personalized tutorial tailored to your project and your specific needs. One thing I'm especially curious about is whether Ludus will eventually evolve to generate full code and blueprints for logic entirely on its own. 
To get a clearer picture of where this is heading, I reached out to Piotr Penar, the creator and CEO of Ludus AI, to hear his thoughts on its future capabilities. In the future, we want Ludus to be able to generate blueprints and blueprint systems and materials flawlessly. Um, we want Ludus to be able to integrate them with the existing code and existing systems that uh, can be in the game, in the project. And we want to add more modalities into our solution. So not only 3D generation, not only scene editing, we also want it to be able to generate audio, to generate sound effects and animations, maybe in the future. But you know, animations are not the easiest ones, yeah. We've only scratched the surface of what AI tools can do. I am genuinely fascinated by how tools like Ludus are shaping the future of game development. On our channel, we recently launched the Dog's Dream podcast, where we dive into industry topics. And in an upcoming episode, we'll be discussing generative AI in game dev with creators of Ludus AI. Leave a comment with an interesting question about the future of AI in game development and I'll make sure to ask them during the podcast. In the process of creating this project, I was using an enterprise version of Ludus that allowed me to, for example, generate 3D models. It is worth mentioning that this functionality is also available for indie and pro versions. And that's where I'd like to share the surprise I mentioned at the beginning of the video. While this video is not sponsored by Ludus, they have offered a gift for you guys. The top three questions for podcast will win a free subscription of Ludus Pro for three months. I am excited to dive deeper into this topic with the creators of Ludus on our upcoming Dog's Dream podcast. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like, subscribe and let me know your thoughts on AI in game dev in the comments. See you in the next one.